A full review of the updated BMW X6 with featured cars let's go here with the changed front double kidney and actually this is here with the vertical fins, the double kidney that the X6M had before. Now, also here for the M performance model, the M60i with the 8 cylinder in our test here. The M Sport pack with accentuations in the lower part is always standard for every X6 model now, of course, and also the same here for the M performance model. Changed headlamps with a new daytime running light in this aero design. It's pretty interesting and you only see when it's on when you come around here a little bit when you look at it from the front, then you see that they're actually on at this moment. Also interesting that when you hit the turning indicators or the hazard lights, it has this pulsing effect. That's a pretty cool thing. Also this color, I think it's a very interesting green. It's called Isle of Man Green, so special and racing car. Length at 4 meters 96 or 195 inches and this side silhouette with the falling roofline and the really strong hip area, some are on team love, some are on team hate about that. Which one are you on? Tell me in the comments. Wheels from 20 inch. This is here 21 inch and optional even 22 inch wheels, but I think you shouldn't go too large because you lose riding comfort then. Talking about the riding comfort, as for the suspension, it's very interesting. You can get the normal adaptive suspension, which is already a little bit stiffer in the X6 because the M Sport Pack is standard. Then, you can go for the Professional M suspension and that one then is even stiffer and you also get the rear axle differential lock, rear axle steering, and an anti-tilt control, or you can also go directly to an air suspension. That's also possible depending on how sporty the ride needs to be for you. The air suspension gives you the widest span between sportiness and comfort. Here, by the way, we have special mirror caps in carbon fiber. This is an option. They also have this special, you know, like aerodynamic M4. The rear axle steering, by the way, moves 3 to 4 degrees in the opposite direction than the front wheels, reducing the turning circle massively. Rear design here, very horizontally drawn tail lamps with a nice signature, and this is a really fat M60i badge in this very version. I like that the vehicle color is picked up in the lower part of the vehicle. However, here. Autochful fake exhaust police alert because the outer tips are fake. Here, this, you know, middle split, then the rear exhaust on the inside. Yeah, they would be beauty enough, aren't they? And in a time where turning indicators get smaller and smaller, this is definitely wide enough. Hmm, honestly, sound-wise for the V8, here in Europe, we have the OPF. That's the particle filter then for the petrol engines, so the sound on the US models will be different. So, I think in Europe, sound-wise, it doesn't even make sense to go for the V8. In the US, it will sound still, you know, much more growling. Engines with the BMW X6, the 3.0-liter inline 6-cylinder diesel or petrol, or then this one here, M60i. M Performance Model, 4.4 liter V8, 530 horsepower, and 4.3 seconds is the acceleration figure. Above that, there's only the true X6M model, but it houses the same base engine, yes, a little bit more horsepower, a little bit quicker in the acceleration, but also like 50k difference in the pricing. So, if you want to go V8, this is the more clever choice and you will already have more than enough performance. We'll show you all of that in the driving part. Plug-in hybrid, by the way, not available for the X6, only for the X5. Key fob always features the M colors because the M Sport Pack is standard for the X6. Then, door closing sound. It's really cool, very solid. And look. Also, here the panel gap, build quality, everything really even inside of the doors. You have everything very slick and clean, also here with the contrast stitches and so on. The Hofmeister kink design, also for the inside door handle, inspired by old BMW vehicles from the exterior part. Then, of course, the M steering wheel here also with contrast stitching, really colorful, but I like we still have real buttons on the steering wheel. But the new cockpit, that is something really different. Command driving position like you have in a large SUV. However, these here are the M sport seats and they are stiffer as for the bolstering and also feel a little bit sportier overall. So, I recommend either to stick with the normal sport seats or for the best comfort, pick the comfort seats. 
They're a little bit wider and softer and the normal sport and comfort seat also offer the Sunsafen high-grade leatherette with the softest bolstering. Here, the M Sport seat only available in animal skin. Interior cockpit overview with huge changes. Here, you now have this curved screen, one unit, two screens separately, of course, and 12. 3 inch, 14.9 inch, and the climate unit inside the screen always stays at this very level, and the climate knobs here are gone. To me, that's a downside. You still can control the vents here manually and, it's a nice clicking sound, and new ambient lighting. Here, I put it also in green. You can change the colors. In this case, because it's the M Performance model, you also have the M badge. Otherwise, it would say X6, then, in base models. The digital instruments come to life when you start up the vehicle like this, and then, oh, there's the 8-cylinder, and they all have mild hybrid technology now, by the way, these engines, so that's a facelift. Therefore, you also see this battery symbol that you can also gain back some energy via regenerative braking. And here, the content, you can have different contents in here. For example, also the map from the Apple CarPlay, for example, that's also possible. Three important things to consider for this middle console unit. Ah, uh, don't pick the high gloss black because it collects fingerprints and scratches and so on, but there are different decors available. Second thing, slide this open, adaptive cup holders, oh, cooled and heated, that's nice, but then, here, the inductive charging pad for the phone, don't use it. Your phone does overheat, and they do not implement a cooling function, also not in the facelift. Here, just use the cable charger, and then, put your phone on the cable. Then, third thing. This is this option for the crystalline look here for the shifting lever, and also here, inside of the turning and pressing knob. This is blinding you, it looks maybe fancy, but just go for the standard option. By the way, you can see here, this is now integrated, really slim and small. Before you had the real shifting lever, it is pro and con. Looks cleaner, but it feels less sporty. News also, as for the software, BMW OS 8.5. It cannot be retrofitted for OS 8.0 models because there's also more hardware underneath for that, and you have this home screen with the CarPlay maps, and here on the left side, you can also easily access, again, the consumption data, for example. This is a good thing because, so far, it was really hidden deep in the menu, and there are still, like, so many functions left, so they created this new home screen to make it easier. The heated steering wheel and heated seats are, by the way, accessed right here. Yeah, to me, it's also a little bit too complicated. That's the only down step with this upgrade. Rear seats, yeah, it's kind of like a black hole than here in this very trim. Nice Alcantara black headliner, though. That's actually quite fancy. Legroom, this is the catch of this vehicle. You hardly have any legroom considering the length. However, here from the height, also, when you're tall, you can sit here in the rear. That's no problem at all. What I find cool is that I still have a manual climate unit here. Then, for the rear seats. As for the trunk, this, of course, somewhat a compromise here with an SUV group because that area here is lower. Then, you have this folding mechanism for this cover, 580 liters, about a meter or 40 inches in length, but 110 or 45 inches in width, and the height here is actually fine. You can also reach over, then, here to unfold the seats from here. That's possible. And, again, just this height in the very front part, this is a limitation with, like, 45 centimeters or 18 inches. Alright, let's go. Plop, that's 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour. Yeah, that about this V8 M60i. You can scream, it's okay. Yeah, she tried to hold back a little bit. Yeah. That was pretty powerful, of course, all-wheel drive with rear axle bias. Yeah, that's a 530 horsepower playing all the effect right there. Who, yeah, that is giving you the goosebumps or the adrenaline. And here, now, adaptive suspension, sportier note here with the M suspension, professional, even stiffer, actually, than anti-tilt control. That means the car is always keeping it upright. Rear axle steering, we also have in this one, rather plays an effect on lower speeds, it reduces the turning circle, and so on. 
Wow, this doesn't feel like driving an SUV, actually, and whereas the X5, especially in standard trims, doesn't come close, like, to the sportiness of a Porsche Cayenne. Here in the M60i trim, and also with stiffer suspension, yeah, this is matching the Porsche Cayenne in the sportiness or at least coming close, so you can definitely compare these, you know, in the corner. Also, really good, as for the steering feel, very precise how you steer in the vehicle. You know what the vehicle is doing, and I'm really happy with the steering feel in the X5 and in the X6 as well. Yeah, there you hear the V8, definitely even louder than in the US versions, without that petrol engine particle filter. Wow, I mean, in tight corners, you still feel the weight, yes, in the low-seating sedan.